Hi, my name is Paul Salmon. I'm uh, actually the chief flight instructor here at uh, Cape Copters in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. We're a flight school. We teach people how to fly helicopters and gyro planes. I thought I'd do a series of educational videos on the concepts that are necessary that you understand to be able to fly a helicopter. First of those is uh, dissymmetry of lift. And what dissymmetry of lift means is basically just as the name implies an unequal amount of lift. An unequal amount of lift be between the advancing side of the rotor disc and the retreating side of the rotor disc. In uh, US made helicopters, the blades turn, if you're sitting in the aircraft, the blades turn to the left. And uh, that means that on the right side of the rotor disc that the blade is advancing into the slipstream as you're moving forward. And on the left side, it's actually retreating away from the slipstream as uh, the aircraft is moving forward. So if you think about it, dissymmetry of lift, there is no dissymmetry of lift at a hover in zero air. The amount of lift produced by the right side and the left side of the rotor is equal. There is no dissymmetry of lift. But as the aircraft begins to move forward then, the speed of the air coming across the blades at the three o'clock position is equal to the rotational speed of the uh, rotor and the forward air speed of the rotor. And over on the left-hand side at the nine o'clock position, the uh, amount of airflow across that blade is equal to the rotational speed of the helicopter minus the forward air speed. So to make the math easy, let's say you've got a helicopter that the blades rotate and the tip speed on the helicopter is right at 500 miles per hour. If you were going forward through the air at 100 miles per hour, then the tip speed at the 3 o'clock position would be 600 miles per hour and the tip speed at the 9 o'clock position, or the actual air speed at the tip of the blade on the retreating side, would be right at 400 miles per hour. That's a significant difference in the amount of lift, or the amount of airflow, across the advancing blade and the retreating blade. So how does a helicopter accommodate for that? And the helicopter actually accommodates by what's called teetering. We fly uh, semi-rigid rotor systems. There's actually three different types of rotor systems. As you start doing your studying, you'll find that they're semi-rigid, rigid, and fully articulated. The cheapest, most basic, simple uh, rotor system to fly is a semi-rigid rotor system. And that's what's present on most of the uh, lighter uh, aircraft, or lighter helicopters like the Robinson. So the semi-rigid rotor system has a hub in the center that uh, connects the two blades together. The blades are always 180 degrees apart and as the blades come around if this blade was to teeter up on this side then on the opposite side the blade teeters down. So whatever one side does the other side does the opposite thing. It teeters up it goes up this way. As the blades rotate the advancing blade actually teeters or teeters up and that teetering up action decreases the angle of attack on the rotor blade on the uh, rotor blade. And the, the uh, opposite side, the retreating side, just does just, just, uh, just the opposite of that or flaps down and that increases the angle of attack on the rotor blade. And the neat thing about it is that they will teeter until the amount of uh, lift across the rotor disc is equal. Make a more lift on the right side, the, that disc is going to teeter up on that side. Over on the left side there's less lift, the blade will teeter down and until the amount of lift is equalized across the rotor disc. 